I'm running because things are better, but better's not good enough for me. We have to be honest with each other. We can't be one, say one thing to one group and another to the other. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one. Dan Strauss is running for a second term to represent District 6 on the Seattle City Council. Running for city council. Pete Hanning runs the Fremont Chamber and has worked in hospitality and nightlife for decades. Both candidates say public safety and homelessness are top priorities for D6, a district that includes Ballard, Green Lake, Fremont, and West Magnolia. Will voters preserve the status quo in D6 or opt for a political newcomer? Public safety is the number one issue. The candidates debate. We are right now looking for those citywide resources. To Looking for some signs about the future leadership of D6. Already, have a good day. On the Seattle City Council, next on City Inside Out. Welcome to this edition of City Inside Out. I'm your host, Brian Callanan. The race for Seattle City Council District 6 has the incumbent, Dan Strauss, up against Pete Hanning, the executive director of the Fremont Chamber of Commerce. Strauss won the primary with more than half the vote and says he wants to keep the momentum going from his first term in office. Hanning, a longtime business and neighborhood leader, is ahead in fundraising and wants to change a council he says is too divisive. This week, a look at the two candidates looking to lead District 6. I'm Councilmember Strauss. Incumbent Dan Strauss. My name's Pete Hanning. And Fremont Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Pete Hanning. Want your vote in City Council District 6. From West Magnolia to Ballard and Loyal Heights and Fremont to Green Lake. I grew up in District 6 and I see the horizon. It has a brighter future than what we have today as long as we don't let up. Strauss, who won 52% of the vote in a six-way primary, says he's worked hard to get D6 and the city back on track. But Hanning criticizes what he sees as his opponent's lack of experience. He's had no jobs outside of government, so that's really the only lens in which he can look at. Hanning, who earned 29% of the vote, started the Seattle Restaurant Alliance and the Nightlife and Music Association, and also ran the Red Door Brew Pub for 20 years. He says he knows how business works. And where your resources go, and also where your taxes go, and how to best assure that they're being used wisely. Sure. Strauss, first elected in 2019, says he's helped reopen Seattle after the COVID pandemic in a vibrant way that addresses people's needs. We, took a we focused program. on the basics and we have to keep moving. Strauss says his top priorities include addressing public safety and homelessness and building affordable housing. We are doing more now than ever before. He points to his work connecting homeless people to shelter at Woodland Park and Ballard Commons as an example of his leadership. I have tackled controversial topics and the way that I've been successful is by bringing people together to find common ground. Hanning's top Hanning, issue, public safety. Council. He says the current council has lost the trust of the police department. The relationship needs to be rebuilt. Hanning, outgoing president of the North Precinct Advisory Council, supports police and new 911 alternatives with sworn officers in support. We'll want the police department to be in second position, but we will want them there to be making sure that the situation is safe for everyone. It's a one-term incumbent up against a business and neighborhood leader in the race for District 6. I bring years of experience of having conversations that are difficult. I know where we've come from. I know where we need to go, and we need to do so more quickly. And we are joined by the two candidates for District 6. We have Councilmember Dan Strauss and Pete Hanning. Thank you both very much for joining here. And I just want to dive in right off the top. Had a coin flip before the show. Councilmember Strauss, you're going to speak first. Tell us why you're running again. Please keep it to a minute. Thanks. I'm Councilmember Dan Strauss. I work half my time in City Hall downtown and half time at my district office at the Ballard Library. My office focuses on three top priorities, and that's addressing public safety, addressing housing, and creating, sorry, addressing public safety, addressing homelessness, and creating the housing that working families can afford because the family that I grew up in needs to be able to, af be able to afford to live in the Seattle of today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I operate public safety task forces in a number of neighborhoods in the district that create real-time solutions by connecting small businesses, residents, and the departments that can meet their needs. I 
support fully funding the police and critical alternatives. Today, we have community service officers patrolling our streets, park rangers in our parks, Health One responding to emergency, and I fully support Mayor Harrell's care department that is coming. If it was my amendment last year that fully funded the police recruitment plan, and today we see the highest number of applications to be an officer in the Seattle Police Department. Uh, I've resolved encampments without sweeps in parks, and we continue, I continue to partner with Mayor Harrell to do that work. Currently, we're implementing the same Ballard Commons and Woodland Park approach down on Leary Avenue. Okay, thank you. I know yeah. there's a lot more ahead on these, so we'll dive into those issues. Pete, if you could, an opening statement in a minute, please. Yeah. Well, uh, the reason why I'm running is the citizens of Seattle uh, deserve a city council that is centered in our shared progressive values, uh, that is holding both compassion and accountable, accountability in equal measure, and a council that's both responsive and transparent. When we started this grassroots campaign back in February of this last year, uh, since then I've knocked on thousands of doors and had countless conversations with residents, business owners, and community leaders. And the four things that we keep on hearing over and over, and this won't be surprising because I'm sure we'll be talking about this today, public safety, homelessness, housing, and climate. Now, I'm not a career politician like my counterpart Dan here is, but I do have 35 years of hospitality uh, industry experience. The last 20 years, I worked, at the, worked and owned the Red Door. And owning a business like that, you don't just own it. You actually have to work it side by side with your team members. And what was important to me was building a really healthy culture. And I really feel right now our city is lacking in healthy culture. And so I want to get back to a place where, unfortunately, our current city council is more performative and divisive, where I, I feel like we need a city council that is collaborative and also pragmatic in working on those issues I laid out. Thank you. And we'll get yeah. into those, I, I, yeah, I promise. I, both of you had talked about the importance of public safety. And Councilmember Strauss, I want to break this down. Your campaign sent out a mailer a couple months ago saying defund the police was a mistake. Yep. This is something you were talking about with other council members back in 2020. Yep. Why did you send that message out? What are you trying to get across to voters with regard to your stance on police and public safety? Yeah, those three words mean something different to almost every single person that I talk to. And what's also very apparent is that funding levels do not create accountability we need to fully fund the police and ensure that our police officers have the appropriate accountability measures in place. In 2020, I said that we need to scale up our alternatives before we scale down the police force. I said that we need to define cuts, not to fund 50%, and that we need to ensure that every 911 call has a first responder happen responding right on time, and that's why it was important to scale up before we scale up alternatives, before we scale down. What I've done since, and I've voted countless times to increase the police department budget, I opposed uh, hiring freezes in 2020. And again, it was my amendment last year that funded the council's budget. So again, the mayor proposes a budget, the council chair proposes a budget, and the right. council members create amendments. Mm -hmm. It was my amendment that funded SPD's, Mayor Harrell's SPD investments to 99% alignment. And that included that officer recruitment uh, plan. Okay, thank you. And I, Pete, I want to make sure I have you jump in here. When it comes to police hiring, if you'd like to touch on that, you've also said you want to improve the council's relationship with police. Can yeah. you talk about that, please? Yeah, well, so uh, I've spent 20 years in public safety. Uh, I've been on the North Precinct Advisory Council for over two decades. I'm also professionally trained in SEPTED principles, which are crime prevention through environmental design. And I think that where Dan um, is missing a step, it's not just financing and the funding of police, it's rebuilding that relationship. We have a severely uh, fractured relationship with our law enforcement officers, and we have to, that work happens from both sides, mm -hmm. but as a council member, I have hundreds of professional relationships, not only with city police department, fire department, King County Prosecutor's Office, City Attorney's Office, Department of Corrections, Liquor and Cannabis Board. We have to leverage both those professional relationships to make sure that we're working all together because we have some really big issues we have to deal with. Public safety is the number one issue that I believe we have to address in our community. 
Can, can I, can I please, respond yeah, to yeah, some please, of that? Yeah, please. That I have a very good relationship with Chief Diaz. I have a very good relationship with many patrol officers in District 6. I have a very good relationship with the North Precinct Captain, Captain Agard. And it, I've also gone the next step to say, how can community be part of this rebuilding uh, relationships. So I funded a position that the Ballard Alliance has hired the public safety coordinator. Beyond that, just like my opponent just mentioned, I have very good relationships with the city attorney's office, with the King County prosecutor's office, so that we are able to create the warm handoff and do the case conferencing that is needed around issues. Because if there's a county and a city issue, we need both parties at the table. Same with policing and and to also have community there. So I've got really great relationships across the board. Uh, I can give you 30 seconds to wrap this up. If you'd Let's like move to. on to another question. All right, I know we could talk about public yeah, yeah. safety this entire half we hour. We got a lot of issues. <laughs> we do, we do. Pete, let's move on to homelessness yeah. if we could, because you've yeah, labeled this as another top priority, as you mentioned. Your opponent has touted the work he's done at Ballard Commons, Woodland Park, you heard that earlier, to connect people who are homeless uh, to shelter and housing. What was your opinion of some of those efforts, and do you have a different way of approaching homelessness compared to your opponent? Well, first, we... Um, we have to really ground ourselves in the compassion that I opened up with. Um, those folks who are experiencing homelessness, many of them really are struggling and deserve every ounce of energy we can give and services we can bring to bear. I do a lot of outreach on the Leary Corridor where Dan's talking about that they're doing work. And it's really hard to see these people in such crisis. But we also have to have an honest conversation when we're doing outreach. So when I do outreach, I let them know, first and foremost, I see them and I care who they are. I care about them. I don't see them as other. And we need to make sure that we're grounded still in that compassion. At the same time, they have a responsibility to start to accept some of these services that we are trying to do outreach. We cannot just continually squeeze the balloon. And I'm really skeptical that this, this outreach that you're doing on Leary isn't just going to squeeze the balloon and we're going to see it pop up somewhere else in our district. I really want to see actionable items. And currently that Leary corridor is so troubling. We have a food bank right there that is beautiful mm -hmm. and, and administering such needed uh, services to our community. We also have a tiny home village. The fact that we're allowing for this... Um, encampment right across the street where there's been numerous shootings in the last month. We really have to put more energy there and we can't just think about that it's going to be a long-term solution. We have to be dedicated to it right now. Meaning what? We need to sweep people out of yes. there? Okay. Yes, okay. we do. And I let them know that not only do I care about them, but I'm actively working on telling them you cannot be here. You are causing you are causing harm to the greater community. The businesses are suffering. Yeah. The residents are also suffering in this situation. Okay. Councilmember Strauss, I want to make sure you yeah. can respond to that. Please. Absolutely. So what we are doing down on Leary is we are using a proven method and we are applying it with special parameters to Leary Way. And so again, the four steps that are needed to draw down instead of sweep around are doing a census and stabilization doing an, a needs assessment to understand what people need. Person so those by are, person, yeah. Those are the first two. Yeah. The second two are moving people into shelter and then doing a surge at the end. Right now, we are right between stage two and three. So the needs assessment is being finalized and we've already started moving people inside and we are right now looking for those citywide resources to make sure that people come inside and aren't just pushed down the street. And so I'm working with local businesses every week. I work on this almost daily, actually. So local businesses, professional outreach. One of the problems that we've seen at Lear, or at Woodland, at least, is when non-professional outreach workers come in and they can create confusion. Yeah. And, it, and it does create some lags and makes the process more difficult. But what's going on down at Leary right now is so large that we're gonna have to uh, address it step by step, not all at once, because we can't wait for the full number of shelter beds to come online all at once. And we've also got professional outreach workers having connections with the police department to follow up on some of these, these issues because the folks who are living outside are being predated against yeah. 
by people who are taking advantage of their vulnerabilities. That, that is an issue with public safety. And I wonder if I could add a piece to this when it comes to homelessness. Sure. And Councilmember Strauss, I'll start with you. I noticed on your website one part of your plan for homelessness, if you're reelected, is to add urgency to yes. the King County Regional Homelessness Authority. I think about the RHA, it's in reset mode, I think we'd have to yeah. say. CEO mm -hmm. Mark Dones resigned rather abruptly back in May. Audits have confirmed a number of financial missteps during Dones' two-year two -year tenure. When you see add urgency, right. tell me what that means and how much faith do you have in the RHA after the number of missteps and problems that they've had? You know, I think that it is absolutely, like you said, it's time for the reset. And that's where we need to, if, if financial decisions are being made, you have to have somebody with a financial background. We also need to reset the culture. The most re requested type of shelter by people living on the streets are tiny homes. Yep. And so bad-mouthing it in public isn't helping anything. Mark Dones did some of that. When, yeah. When what we know is that we have to get people off the streets because people on the streets are dying right now. And so when we are able to create more financial accountability and reset the culture, we also need our suburban cities to participate. And I think that there's some skepticism there because they don't see what, they, what the outcome is that they will get for their participation. Now, we don't need just money, right? right? Because they don't have as much money as the city of Seattle or King right. County. And they do have the land that is needed either for tiny homes or for permanent supportive housing because the land in Seattle is so much more expensive. Mm -hmm. And so the urgency that I see needed is to make these changes, to start implementing uh, a, a new version of Partnership for Zero Downtown. And okay. again, the Leary work that we're doing right now is based on their principles. So we are right now creating the model that can then be transferred downtown. Thank you. And Pete, any thoughts on the Regional Homelessness Authority? There's a lot of questions around this organization. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's upsetting that the city of Seattle funds 70% of it, and uh, the 34 other jurisdictions, for the most part, surrounding uh, Seattle and King County have got alligator arms, and they're not reaching down to their wallet. And this, you're right, they have both space that we can put some of those services, but God damn it, they got to put some money in. And it's really upsetting. The city of Seattle, the citizens of Seattle should be outraged that the other region is not participating in this. And, and on the council, I guarantee you'll hear that disappointment and that outrage in my voice. Okay, fair enough. I want to move on to affordable yeah. housing if I could. Uh, the state, as we all know, has legalized more density in cities like Seattle, including four plexes and six plexes if they're close to transit through House Bill 1110. Councilmember Strauss, if you're reelected, yeah. this, this issue is going to be front and center with the renewal of the comprehensive plan on the docket That's next right. year. I'm trying to figure out where do these new units go? Every neighborhood, some neighborhoods, should some be exempted? How do you look at this? So across our city, we are going to see changes changes in zoning because of House Bill 1110. And what we know is that right now in District 6, we have over 800 non-conforming uses. Non-conforming uses are buildings that were built before we downgraded our zoning. So these are duplexes, triplexes, quads, sixplexes, small apartment buildings that are now in single family zones where they cannot be built today. And yet, they, are, they fit with our community. When folks are driving up uh, on 3rd Avenue by Ross Park, there's some red apartment buildings just up, uphill, mm -hmm. on the uphill side. Those are illegal to build there. When you're driving up 8th between Market and Goodwill, all of those duplexes, illegal today. Mm. And so what we are going to be seeing is the need for gentle density in a lot of our, across our, our, our district and our city, mm -hmm. and then more intense density. When you build a concrete platform of the first two stories, the difference between five, eight, ten stories above that is only to, the cost is already put in with the concrete, okay, right? Okay, and yeah. so it's important that we give them the height that they need to add more housing around those transit lines mm. and that we have these duplexes, triplexes, and quads throughout our city okay. and that they fit with the community, the character of the community because we can have both. Uh, Pete, let's talk about this and uh, yeah. housing where it should go. Some thoughts on this, please. Well, I, I'm in agreement with Dan in this. We need to all share in the uh, responsibility of putting housing in all our communities. We also need to not only put housing in our communities, but we also have to uh, afford for small businesses like coffee shops, like Lighthouse Coffee, my local coffee shop, that currently isn't zoned as it, as it currently exists, mm. right? It wouldn't be accepted. And so that's what's going to make these vibrant communities still. And 
Bill 1110, one of the things I'm really thankful that the state did is the city of Seattle has taken too much of the growth and pressure over the last 13 years. You know, we're the fastest growing city 12 of the last 13 years. A lot of the surrounding region really wasn't taking in some of that growth. Mm. And so what this bill does actually is it requires the other municipalities throughout the state to actually share in some of this growth. And because of that, I think we're actually going to see a little more of that gentle growth in our community. It also, um, because of the economics as they are, you know, financing um, building is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So we're gonna see a little tampering on that growth. But we also recognize that we are gonna be continuing to grow. We also already have a lack of housing in our communities. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to also be sure that we're protecting those small landlords who really provide some of that affordable housing in our communities. We've lost a lot of that stock. And then when I've been knocking on doors, one of the things I remind folks is, we are in a climate emergency. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have climate refugees moving to our community because they can read the paper too. And when they're sitting in 110 degrees for 60, 70 days on end, and they see where it's 70 and 80 in the summertime, you know, we, we can't keep that a secret anymore. It was a, we kept that secret for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're going to actually have to recognize that that growth is going to come. And a lot of the pe people who are going to bring that growth are going to have resources that are going to put pressure on some of our housing stock as well. Thank you. I wonder if I could talk with you, Pete, about your work in business. 35 years in small business, as you mentioned. I wanted to get your take on the Seattle economy here because downtown isn't the only neighborhood in recovery mode, clearly. In District 6, Target recently announced it would close the store on Leary due to theft, organized crime, etc. I just want to get your take on the business climate in D6, if you could. What changes would you consider to boost business, maybe, if you were elected? Well, thank you. I, I did not bring up in my intro that I'm also currently, I'm the executive director of the Fremont Chamber of Commerce. Right. So that's my day job, uh, is support of business and the business community. And I'm passionate about it. Our business communities are what make our neighborhoods so vibrant, right? It is what we care about. It is where we meet our neighbors, it is where we celebrate um, all of our birthday parties. It, it is what makes our, our city so wonderful to be in. And they're struggling. They're struggling primarily around public safety. You know, businesses are not feeling like they can hire adequately, partly because people don't want to come to those businesses if they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So we have to put a lot more emphasis on making sure that those businesses are protected along the Leary Corridor, in the downtown Ballard area, along Finney Ridge, where we've had some really troubling uh, crime, obviously in the Fremont community as well. Uh, I am laser focused on supporting our small business. I love celebrating small business. Um, you know, in Fremont, we have such a cool, diverse mix of businesses from some of the largest tech companies in the world to tattoo parlors and punk rock bars, yeah. you know, and, and that's what makes Fremont really vibrant and cool. It's the center so of the I want to make sure right? that yeah. we continue that. Got it. Thank you. I yeah. wanted to make sure I, I brought you in here, Councilmember yeah. Strauss, and talk about some of the work that you've done during your term to work with local businesses, and if you wouldn't mind expounding on that. Yeah, and I absolutely was sad to see the Target on Market Street close, and it was really unfortunate that all of the stores that they closed were their small format stores, right? right. Because, and the Bartels across the street yeah. also. Right. Which was also acquired recently in yeah. a merger, and we right. have a Bartels a couple blocks away and a Walgreens across the street from there and a Safeway across the street from both of them. Yeah. Both Walgreens and uh, Safeway have larger parking lots. I don't yeah, need yeah, to yeah. go into it. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. focus yeah. on public safety every day. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mentioned this earlier that in my public safety task forces that I have operating in a number of neighborhoods, Ballard is one of those places. And I, hired, I, I funded a position at the Ballard Alliance, this public safety coordinator, to mirror what is going on in the university district. What is different between Ballard and the University District today is that there's a team of people working on the street to help small businesses that the Ballard Alliance doesn't have. So this budget cycle, I'm looking at how do we expand that work. And you know what we see in Ballard today is that there's higher foot traffic today than there was in 2019. And that's a really good sign. You know, what I do in, in my office is not only do I have a district office at the Ballard Library that I share with the police department, they have their own substation. Yep. I, my D6, I have a D6 district director, and it's her job to focus on both resident issues and small business issues. So I have a quarter of my staff dedicated to being responsive to our community. And this is helping from anything from permits to walking through the window replacement fund to 
who do I call because bureaucracy seems to be grinding? Something that's very important to me okay. is that D6 residents don't have to go at it alone. Okay. Thank I'm you. here to have their back. I appreciate that. And I wanted to make sure I open it up. I can only give you about 30 seconds, but I always find this to be important. There are always issues that are important to your campaigns that are kind of behind the headlines. Pete, I know you mentioned climate. If you want to talk more about that, you can. Is there something that we haven't covered today you want to let voters know about? You know, I really, um, I've been really honored in this process of um, running for elected office. There are so many people who are really committed and care about our community. And I think that what we need to do and what the city's responsibility is to help them knit together, right? It's that community building piece and providing that, that format so that they really know that they are not alone. Like Mayor Harrell says, it is one Seattle. Um, and I'm really passionate about that. And I really feel that um, those skills that I have brought, you know, can really help our city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. And we'll yeah. talk more about that in a second. Good. 30 seconds, if you could, an issue we haven't brought up yet, Council Member Strauss. Well, you know, talking about homelessness again, I've partnered with Mayor Harold to scale up our neighborhood-based homelessness response teams. Previously, there was just one team for the whole city, and now we're breaking out to have regional models so that the same city workers are in the same places that they are every day so that they yeah. know when things are getting better. They know when things are getting worse. They don't have to rely on find it, fix it. Got it. And what I know today is that things are better today, but better's not good enough for me. And that's why I'm running for re-election because I wanna raise my kids in a neighborhood that is safer than the one that I grew up in. Well, let's wrap it up and I think we'll, we'll hear some more of these messages. Councilor sure. Strauss, your campaign has raised about $136,000 as of mid-October. If you would, talk to, talk to me about your top three endorsements and let's wrap this up. I can give you 45 seconds, please. Sure, I'm endorsed by Mayor Harrell. I'm endorsed by AG Bob Ferguson. I'm endorsed by the Building Trades and by MLK Labor. I have numerous union endorsements, including the Seattle Firefighters Union, over 25 currently and formerly elected officials, and many different community organizations, and many just average day District 6 residents. It's an honor to have be the only incumbent with Mayor Harrell's endorsement. Okay, thank you very much for that. Pete, you get the last word. You've raised $182,000 for your campaign as of mid-October. If you could, top three endorsements and wrap it up with why Thanks. voters should support you. Well, I'm currently at the max. I can't fundraise anymore. Uh, and I think that's an uh, indication of my support. My top three is the community, the community, and the community. It really has been a grassroots campaign. Um, I have been doing this by knocking on doors, talking with folks, and asking for their support. And it's really been shown that they really want to be supportive. So I'm very thankful of that. I do have the endorsement of the Seattle Times, hospitality for progress, obviously. I am passionate about the business community, and so I have a lot of support in the business community. But it's really the residents of D6 that I am thankful for their support. Okay, thank you both very much for this. Thanks, we Brian. We'll be right back. What are people saying online about the two candidates for Seattle City Council District 6? One person writes, Strauss deserves credit for his extensive work on clearing out camps in a way that doesn't result in just another camp down the street. Another person comments, this candidate is focused on the true issues. Hanning said he will focus on the basics, public safety, homelessness, and responsible financial management. We'd like to know what you think. Send us an email at contact at seattlechannel.org or find us on social media. Thanks for watching this edition of City Inside Out. Remember to cast your vote by November 7th. It's free to mail in your ballot, which must be postmarked by that day, or you can drop it off at a King County Elections drop box at your local library and around the city. See you next time.